Hello and welcome. We're just going to get into a quick match because I just lost and I don't want to be paired up with the same person. Actually, that would be okay. But I just played a match and it was awful because I didn't get my draw. I am playing against the same person. Hopefully, hopefully, I will get my draw. I didn't in my starting hand, but I have an advantage in that I know what's in this person's deck. So, when I'm like... This person has armored sandworms in their deck. I I am sure of it because <laughs> I just played this person. So that's a thing you didn't know. Um, man, I, I just did a recording that I'm not going to keep. I know I'm not going to keep it, and it's it's just awful. So we're, oh, I got blood frenzy. Basically, this deck doesn't work if you don't get blood frenzy. Now you know. So we're going to get rid of all of them because I have two of them. That's about it. And yeah. Uh, let's see, things I wanted to say. We're playing against a Lodwin. I'm playing a Boris deck. Oh, right, Boris. Okay, so let's just go back two, three, four. I don't know, how long has Shadow Era been out? I've kind of been here from the beginning. So let's get rid of A Blood Frenzy. I'm kind of cheating because I don't think she has a Sever Ties. And uh, what, like, she went through most of her deck and never played a Sever Ties on my Rage, which is kind of weird. Or Rampage. I have Rampage in this deck too. I don't think she had it. Anyway, so whatever. Shadow Era was in its infancy. Um, Dirk, I think is his name, was a 3-2 or 2-3 with Ambush. He was OP at the time. I came in right after they fixed him. I think there was 50 cards total. There wasn't the rogue allies or the wolven or the heroes, the rogue heroes, or the wolven heroes, or... Yeah, there were so many differences. I would love to name them all, but we're not going to. So you get to choose your starting hero, and I chose Gwyneth. Now Gwyneth, you know, the hunter, it kind of allured me a little bit. So we're going to get rid of this bad Santa because I have my blood frenzy. Um... Okay, what we're going to do is play this guy, and he's good to get out early. That's all I have to say about that move. I chose Gwyneth. There were no cards for her. There wasn't Soul Seeker at the time. I think there was Guardian's Bow, the green one, Beetle Bow. No, Guardian's the Beetle Bow. Um, that was the only bow available. Um, plus her, I don't know what her original ability was, but it's not what it is now. It was, I think it just added durability. I didn't add the attack, and it was really, like, terrible. Um, but yeah, so, whatever, I took Gwyneth, um, things I want to say about this match. Okay, so, these guys, it's nice to have six resources and throw both of them out, because they get their bonus. Um, it's also good to get out other allies and uh, protect them by doing that, so that's kind of... Like, well, why didn't you play that one over the Alden or something? I don't know. That's why. Because it's going to die, but then I'll, can, I can throw both out. Whatever. You get it. Hopefully. Um, so whatever. I chose Gwyneth. Got really frustrated really quickly. It, it wasn't really my fault. It was the, the, the deck's fault. Only the Warriors had really been, like, made. Like, there were only really cards for the Warriors and the Mages. Because the Mages were kind of easy. Like, oh, Fireball spell, Lightning spell. Like... Pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna get rid of one smashing blow because it's a mage. We're gonna throw out both of these guys. Um, so yeah, so I chose one. Well, then I went back and I'm like, what hero should I choose? I was really frustrated, blah, blah, blah. And Boris is just the first guy sitting there. So I chose Boris. And uh, yeah, I, so I, <laughs> I spent like, I learned to play Shadow Era with Boris, because you know, you really have to play like with the first hero you choose, and uh, it was Boris for me, yeah. Um, but I had an awesome deck, oh my gosh, it was, this was back when you only needed 30 cards. Uh, if you didn't know that, you, there was a time where there wasn't a 40 card minimum, there was a 30 card minimum. Blood Frenzy only cost 2, it didn't cost 3. And uh, it was OP, definitely, but it was awesome. You get. Blood Frenzy out, turn two, and then you just wreck everything. Um, but yeah. Oh, so what are we gonna do here? There's a couple options. 
The main one being to skip and play that guy. And end my turn. So, whatever, I learned to play Boris. So, Boris got a little nostalgia, I guess. Um, but I made this deck. We'll go over the deck at the end. It's got some interesting points I'd like to make about the cards that I chose because I really didn't think a deck like this would work too well, and it's been working like really well, so that's a thing. Um, I've been saying that's the thing a lot, in my head at least. I don't say it out loud because it sounds stupid, but whatever. So let's get rid of one of these guys. Plus, I use this guy effectively. I don't think he's used effectively in like any deck, and I'm like, yes, I'll use him effectively all day. All day. So yeah, that was my story. We're in great position, if you didn't know. Like, in this match, I'm really happy with where I am. I'm thinking, I'm gonna win. At this point, I'm... He doesn't have his draw out. She, he... I don't know, maybe it's a transgender. It doesn't have his draw out. <laughs> it doesn't have his draw out. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not being offensive, though. I'm just being kind of loopy, I suppose. So, if you take any offense, I apologize. Anyway. Uh, I know he's a Tomanolage. He played a Tomanolage last match. He's got a Fireball for the Wild Berserker. Wild Berserker is also, like, the most awesomest card ever. So is Dragon's Tooth. Um, Dark Prophecies definitely added tons of, like, great cards. So, let's get rid of this Rampage. Um, we can play both allies. Or we can play like Rampage, whatever. See, I like to use this. We're gonna play Rampage and Rage. Uh, the reason is, I don't know, I like to use this like as a hasted ally. It's so much more effective than just throwing it out there. Um, other allies you can just throw out there and be like, yeah, whatever, deal with it. Uh, Wild Berserker isn't one of those. It's like something you wanna keep like one in your hand and then like, oh my gosh, I'm getting behind, Wild Berserker, what are you gonna do now? So, that's definitely the advantage. Uh, it goes well with Alden, especially late game, because you can be like, Wild Berserker Alden, I'm doing 5 damage to your ally. Deal with it. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's get rid of this Blood Frenzy, and lo and behold, I'm going to use my ability, though, because I there's a lot of other allies I'd much rather Crippling Blow. So that's why I didn't play the Crippling Blow. Okay, so that's the thing. We are going to throw him out now, just because I can. Um, she's getting shadow energy, too. You know, eventually you just have to, like, throw him down. Plus, I don't want to just throw out the Barbarian and be like, Oh, yeah, Barbarian, you can kill him. Good job. Like, at least make him choose. Make him use a Fireball if he wants to clear the board or a Supernova or something. You know, not just... Yeah. Do you understand? I think you do. Um, the point of this deck, she she hasn't really been playing a lot of cards. I think I've just actually been dealing with it. <laughs> now, that now that I think about it, like I've just been dealing with it. Like she plays cards, and I just have been dealing with the ally she puts out. This deck really, it, it works. It does well. It does a good job of staying on the offense and having counters at like the same time. But if your opponent has like any counter whatsoever it's like oh you're screwed sorry um like a severing ties like oh sorry like you lose so that's the downside um even if they have a severing ties like though it's not always just like game over um the, ma the kind of matches i lose are when i don't get blood frenzy which was like last match i played against this person i just didn't get it like i went 18 cards deep and i just didn't get it he won. I wasn't going to be able to come back, and I quit. Um, which I, I, I didn't rage quit. I just, like, you won. I probably should have wrote GG and just quit, but I didn't because, I don't know, I'm an asshole. Um, so let's skip. Let's play Gunther. I'm, I'm not going to kill... Yeah, yeah. So last match, I talked about how you should really just use Boris's ability whenever you can. Um, not on one more, like a Christopher, but like on most things, you should just use Boris's ability. And the reason is, is because there's no real reason to store it up. 
it's it's not really advantageous for you because late game the person like can start playing well i'm gonna sacrifice lower costing allies and play higher costing allies and then you get stuck like you didn't get to use it and like you know early on you were dealing with the lower cost allies and you know you should have been saving those cards for late game so i would use boris's ability like use it don't keep it um but i mean you can do whatever you want but that's my suggestion my my little advice to you he plays an alden which i'll have a crippling blow for um a little upset to play crippling blow on an alden it's not great but it's what i'm gonna do um so i'm gonna just skip because i can get the crippling blow out this guy and yari spearman they talk about how awesome yari spearman is Yari Spearman is great because he has Protector and he's cheap. Aeon's great, whatever, yeah, he is. But Yari Spearman, because you can do what I did. You play both of them. Now, I'm able to get a, someone to protect it out so he can't just fireball the Barbarian, but it's like... So now you have to like somehow kill the Yari Spearman to get to the Barbarian, which is what you really care about. So, when, or Supernova, you know, that works just as well. Uh, and he's got an engulfing flames. I'm not too upset about that. I'm taking three damage per turn, but I can heal two from Rampage. Um, yeah, okay. Skip. Let's play these two guys. And then my turn. Uh, he's doing a good job of dealing with me, though. He really is. Um, yeah, so I don't even really know what's happening. Um,. The biggest part of this match is going to be looking at the deck afterwards because I have a lot of things I want to mention. Because um, I think this is a really unique deck. I don't think a lot of people play a Boris deck quite like this, and I think they should. Now, to be interesting, he's going to go for the Enrage. Um, and I don't remember if I have another one. Oh, he's just going to. He wins. Okay, so he won. So, uh. I will say, a deck, I mean, it's funny, Engulfing Flames and Poison Gas aren't like the greatest cards, but they really destroy Warriors. But if you don't have those cards, Warriors usually do some damage to Mages. 284, I, I kind of, I'm up there. I'm a, some people are like, I can't even make it to 200. You'll get there one day, don't worry. Well, I, I'm, I want to get to 300 again, I'm disappointed. Uh, this deck's been going well. I almost broke 290, and I just lost these past two games. Um, deck. So let's look at the deck. Okay, so what I want to start with is the draw. Let's start with draw. So my draw is Bud Frenzy and the two bad Santos. Now, I originally had these as two treasured heirlooms, and they didn't really work that well. They were kind of okay, but... First of all, it only gave you two cards, and second of all, you had to have an ally out to be able to play it. So, Bad Santa, it is. Um, Smashing Blow is helpful. So, okay, so this deck, because it's all about just putting out allies, and I don't really have like abilities or weapons to fall back on, I have Dragon's Tooth, but really it's like getting allies out. And so, you're kind of like, expecting like a, an ally kind of shootout that, that's what this deck does really well against and that's why i have rampage i mean you have two enrages because it's just they're great cards and uh but that's you know two rampage that's like maybe a questionable card like you know why would you put that in there it's helpful in this deck i don't think it's helpful in all decks like i don't think people put it with amber decks i don't I don't think that's a good idea. Amber, I don't think it's as helpful as you may think with Amber. Um, but Boris, definitely. Man, because he, he gets to kill allies with his ability. And um, so, okay, this deck has like a lot of synergy. And I guess I just want to go over like all the combos that I have, okay? So that's what, just what I'm going to do. All the ones that I can think of. So, okay, Wild Berserker goes well with Rampage because Wild Berserker is good at just coming out and like killing an ally like to get ahead and you heal two damage nice 
Wild Berserker is also great with Crippling Blow. Because you Crippling Blow allies and then, you know, you have, like, they have the ally advantage so you can get out Wild Berserker with haste. Okay, so that is helpful with that. Um, crippling Blow also goes well with Champion of Irem. Because if you Crippling Blow allies, then he can come out as a 3-5 instead of just a 1-3 or 2-4. Um, let's see what else kind of has um i explained yari spearman they're super awesome because of the protector um especially if you can get two out i mean two five is so much two two fives in one turn is so much scarier than a one four you know so they're like super helpful especially if you have an ally like you know i try to play these like to actually protect other allies i don't just throw them out there like oh yari spearman like, hopefully I can play it with an ally on the same turn, I have six resources, or I have an ally out there, um, and I want to protect it. Okay, now Alden goes well with the Barbarian, sort of, but a lot of the Wild Berserker. And the reason is, is because if you have an Alden out, you can get a Wild Berserker out, that lets you do... Um, five damage to an ally and a lot of the big meanies are of five health like a plasma behemoth a molten destroyer um, I can't think of any others on the top of my head but you know whatever five so super helpful okay dragon's tooth um, that's just kind of there I use it I mean I use it I don't I don't not use it I definitely like three um, it's very helpful okay as you can see, I have a lot of allies in this deck. Uh, we can count it up real quick, just you know the number if you want. Because I didn't do that, I usually do. Uh, so this is 11, 12, 21. So half, 21, half the deck. That's pretty much like, oh, I'm running an ally deck. I have half my deck as allies. Um, I like to run those decks. Okay, now we, let's talk about the Gunther and Karlstad. Because you might be like, oh, Strad, I didn't see that off. So what, okay, so I only have one of these cards, um, Karlstrad, so I threw it in here like, okay, I'll throw it in here, because I have a lot of allies, and I have a lot of 3cc allies, uh, if you didn't, like, realize, um, so it's easy to have, like, one or two allies on the board, like, the whole match, so I was like, oh man, I'll play around with Karlstrad, uh, I have one, might as well use it, I, like, I, you know, like, I never put him in a deck, and I was like, okay, but I wanted two 6cc allies, and uh, I didn't want to put Aeon in there because he is Protector. And I'm like, I want to use the Yari Spearman as, like, the Protector. So I don't, you know, I, I want Karlstead to be able to, like, hide behind a Yari Spearman. That was, like, the whole point. Because then it's like, you're probably not going to be able to kill the Karlstead if I can get him out and the Yari Spearman on the same turn. It's like, what are you going to do? So... That's why I didn't want to put Aeon out, because I wanted something else big that could hide behind the Ari Spearman, which is why I chose Gunther. And now that I've played with this deck, I'm actually like, Gunther is awesome too. Like, I don't know if I got a Karlstad, I would want to, or like if I bought another one, if I'd want to replace the Gunther with it. Because Gunther, okay, so here's the advantages of Gunther. He has Steadfast, which you would be surprised how many times, like, that helps. Like, I don't know, people kind of on the forums, maybe not as much anymore, but I haven't been on the forums in a while. But um, people on the forums kind of like, ah, oh, Steadfast, yeah, it's kind of cool. I love it. I think it adds a whole, it, it does add, like, another element to the game. It, like, it fits well, it adds something. I mean, it's super frustrating. Have you ever had a time where, like, you had a retreat or you had a dagger of unmaking or something, and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, I can get rid of the Gunther or the... I had a game where this was a meltdown match, but I, had a re I wanted to retreat a Spirit Warden so badly, and I couldn't. It was, like, so crucial to the game, and I couldn't do it, you know? It, like, it's, it's helpful, you know? Um, I mean, okay, and the other thing is, just like Alden, he has this ability okay to do like plus one attack so a lot of if i can if i can get him out and alden out and like any one other ally i pretty much won unless you're playing against the mage and they have supernova but 
like any other deck, like, sorry, you're kind of screwed. Like, because every turn I'm going to be drawing, pro I'm probably going to be drawing an ally and I'm going to be playing it. So not only do you have to deal with these three, like, awesome allies, I'm going to keep putting out allies. Like, so that's where this deck really comes in handy or plays well. And I'll probably have a match where I just totally wipe the floor with someone because it is possible. Okay, Smashing Blow. I have that in this deck. That's really important because some weapons can just totally destroy like all of the strategy. For example, King's Pride. Like, you're, all these allies are meant to deal with like four or five health allies. All of a sudden, if you have like a six health ally, it's like, what do you do? So, Smashing Bro is really helpful. Um, And, you know, so is the Dragon's Tooth in that sense. Because the Dragon's Tooth is there to get rid of the Gunthers, the Aeons, the um, Kairos, Doombringers. So, it's kind of like... I mean, so is the Crippling Blow. So you have a lot of weapons in this deck. So, it's just a really offensive deck. It is not, like, control at all. It's super offensive. But it's, like, I love it. And that, you know, and that's the other mention I want to make about the Ari Spearman is that's why I think he works so well in this deck is because it's so offensive and your opponent is like trying to deal with all these allies and all of a sudden you throw him out there and it's like lightning strike doesn't do as much now and like I can't utilize other cards and like consuming fear like what's the point so it really helps or like perfect shot man I have to perfect shot the Yari Spearman do I really want to do that so it's so helpful, the Yari Spearman. Um, I guess we'll just talk about him real quick. So he is helpful. Um, he gets the plus one attack too. Uh, that doesn't come into play too often. It does enough that I keep him in there though. Over like Jasmine, let's say. Because I can throw him out early. And now... If he throws out any, you know, a uh, Wolven Tracker or a, uh, well, I've killed a Wolven Tracker with him before. I know that. Um, that's why I'm like, or a Marshland Sentinel or, I mean, he, he, okay, he's not like, oh my gosh, he works in all these cases. That's not true. But some of these, it's, it's helpful to have him out there because he does do three. He's a three, four. He's not a two, four. So it's like, he's helpful, he can be pushed up to a 4-4 really easily with Alden or Gunther's ability, and against um, Rider of Elos is another one um, that he'll be able to like kill, or like, see, he plays a Weimer, I have him out, you might be thinking, well, what can I do, well, and then I get an Alden out, all of a sudden I can kill that Weimer. Uh, Jasmine, you're not going to be in that position. I can even kill a Plasma Behemoth with him. So th that's how the deck's set up. Okay, that is enough talking about this deck. Um, that's all I have to say about it. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe as always. Bye.